The Lord be with you. You're very welcome to our service of morning prayer the new year. Now, our service is coming to you this morning from St. Michael's Church Athai, part of the Athai Union of Parishes, and I'm the rector here, the Reverend Canon of Donahoe. And you're very welcome from all parts of the world as we join together in worship and celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. And Epiphany is that is that sort of pivotal point of the church year. Uh, it's that bittersweet moment when we turn our gaze from the Christ child uh, in the manger to look into the eyes of the adult Jesus. And that changes everything. So our opening hymn sets the theme and the tone of our worship this morning. It's hymn number 201, We Three Kings of Orient Are. Of Orient, heaven is palace of heart, and far. to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to be forgiven, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. So let us confess our sins to God our Father, saying together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
O Lord, open our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And the Canticle Jubilee. O shout to the Lord in triumph, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God, it is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, shall be forever. Amen. And we sit now for our first reading. The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They shall all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see, the, see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill with joy, with rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, and wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, and young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is psalm number... 100, uh, Psalm number 72. We say it by alternate first. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he live while the sun endures, and as long as the moon throughout all generations. In his days, may righteousness flourish and peace abound, it until the moon is no more. May all kings fall down before him, all nations give him service. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Of our next hymn, uh, hymn number 194, Earth Has Many a Noble City. And it has that lovely line in it, if you listen very carefully, sacred gifts of mystic meaning. Hymn 194.
Our second reading. The second reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. In the time of Herod the king, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star in its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly, secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he went... Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay my homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star and they, that they had seen as at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, the Feast of the Epiphany is actually next Wednesday on the 6th of January, and it's the end, the last day of the 12 days of Christmas. And I think for many of us, the Christmas spirit is well and truly spent by the 6th of January comes as something of a relief and we can finally put away the Christmas decorations, which before Christmas were beautiful and looked so festive. But now this week, well, it's just so over. So this, so has the epiphany any real relevance for us except as a sigh of relief? Well, having read Matthew's gospel earlier in the week, I was reading around and one of the commentators uh, Herbert O'Driscoll had it's a very interesting and, and particular points to make about the three kings, the three wise men. For example, he asks, who were they when they were at home? 
Where precisely did they come from? And why did they make that particular journey? Matthew gives us the bare bones, but of course we can guess and speculate and imagine. And scholars have spent whole lifetimes studying these three wise men. But in the end, uh, but in the end, we know uh, what we know is that very little beyond the short factual account in Matthew's Gospel. But for that very reason, we can surround them with a sort of romantic guesswork. And, uh, and perhaps the most inspiring word of this, of this um, nature is T.S. Eliot's poem, The Journey of the Magi. Now, people of a certain age, i.e. mine, uh, will remember learning this poem, The Journey of the Magi, by heart. Um, and uh, it probably, we used a book at that stage in secondary school called Soundings. It was a book of poetry. And we all had to learn this uh, journey of the major by heart. And so it has always stuck with me. A cold coming we had of it, just the wrong time of the year for such a journey. And those lines, I can never forget them. There were times, Eliot says, there were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces, and the silken girls bringing sherbet. Sherbet. A childhood memory. But Matthew's account of the wise men's journey, short as it is, has very real meaning for us today. Living in lockdown during the COVID pandemic, although it seems we, unlike the wise men, are locked in and can't actually journey anywhere. We are locked down and locked in, and we have the perfect opportunity, actually, to reflect on our own journey through life. Because like the wise men, we too are on a journey. Ours, of course, at this time is an inner journey. And as we journey, we are changing, we're deepening, and we're maturing. And we're we are developing our spirituality as we grapple with the experience of our daily lives in these particular conditions. And like them, like the wise men, we now have Christ as our shining star in our lives, a star on which we can fix our gaze and which will guide us. And here's an interesting point. King Herod, in the account in Matthew, King Herod stands for, he represents everything which is the enemy of the journey. Herod turns up in many disguises on our journey, busyness, weariness, cynicism, burnout, or even anxiety. He is always trying to stop us going on, trying to distract us or sidetrack us on our journey, just like he did the wise men. And now, even after the, the interview or audience with Herod, the wise men were not deterred. They set out again. They had been sidetracked, they stopped, they were distracted, but they reconfigured, isn't that what the computers always say it's when they're doing something you can't understand, they're reconfiguring. So the wise men did exactly the same thing, they reconfigured, they found the star again, and they resumed their journey. And following the star, they found the Christ child, and they just knew. They knew they were in the right, if surprising, place. And that's what happens to us too. Because in those special moments in our lives, when we sense the very real presence of God, we know, we know deep in our hearts, and we bow down, and we offer our gifts. And as I say, that changes everything. Amen. And now we stand to affirm the faith, which will give us the strength to journey on. As we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we sit now for our next hymn, uh, hymn number 198, The First Noel. be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And the collect of this, the Feast of the Epiphany. Creator of the heavens, who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide and sustain us, that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. And we continue uh, in prayer, saying the collect together. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray for the church gathered around the world. We thank you, God, for all those who have brought the good news of your love to us. We thank you for all who nourish our faith today. We pray that the whole people of God, gathered throughout the world, may work in unity and openness for the coming of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. And we thank you, God, that salvation is for all. We pray for a just and accepting world, for a world where no one is rejected, where no one is despised, where no one is treated with contempt. We pray, too, for the parts of the world that are torn apart by war, where lives are destroyed, all potential lost, where people live without hope. We pray, Lord, that we may make a Christian loving response to those in need. We pray for this country. We pray for the EU following the happening of Brexit on New Year's Eve. We pray for all those countries grappling with the pandemic, particularly for those who are dealing on the front line, putting their own lives in danger. We pray for scientists as they research more and more about this disease. And we give you thanks, Lord, for their work in producing a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of having children and of living together in families. And we pray for our home and for our church family as well, that we may always be welcoming, that we may always be generous hearted that we may always remember that you are the unseen guest in our homes. Lord, in your mercy. And we thank you, God, for all who have reached the end of their earthly journey in faith, that they may be welcomed into your eternity. May we use the time left to us here as good stewards of your gifts. Lord, in your mercy. And we bless you, God. We bless each other in the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And now, today, I get the opportunity to make amends uh, for something I forgot to put in on Christmas Day. And that was a very special recording made by fifth and sixth class in a Thai model school of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And it is Oskelge. And I promised them I would play it on Christmas Day. And in all the thing, I just totally forgot. So today, I want to play fifth and sixth class in the Thai model school, playing, singing. Nosed reindeer, Oscar. <laughs> I want to thank uh, sixth class, fifth and sixth class for that. That was a lovely interlude and, and for doing it specially for us. And indeed, the, for the junior, senior infants who did away in a manger and for... Uh, 
fourth and fifth who did, um, what did they do? They did a lovely recording of the little drummer boy, which was really, really lovely. So thank you very much to the Athai Model School for that. So our final um, hymn this morning is, uh, is the Holly and the Ivy. And following that, um, we're going to read T.S. Eliot's poem, The Journey of the Magi. So hymn number 183, The Holly and the Ivy. coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year for a journey, and such a long journey. The ways deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. And the camels galled, sore-footed, refractory, lying down in the melting snow. There were times we regretted, the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces and the silken girls bringing sherbet. Then the camel men cursing and grumbling and running away, and wanting their liquor and women, and the night fires going out, and the lack of shelters. And the cities hostile, and the towns unfriendly, and the villages dirty, and charging high prices. A hard time we had of it. At the end, we preferred to travel all night, sleeping in snatches with the voices singing in our ears, saying that this was all folly. Then at dawn, we came down to a temperate valley, Wet, below the snow line, smelling of vegetation, with a running stream and a water mill, beating the darkness, and three trees on the low sky, and an old white horse galloped away in the meadow. Then we came to a tavern, with vine leaves over the lintel, six hands at an open door, dicing for pieces of silver, and feet kicking the empty wineskins. But there was no information, and so we continued, and arrived at evening. Not a moment too soon, finding the place, for it was, you may say, satisfactory. All this was a long time ago, I remember, and I would do it again. But set down this, set down this, were we led all that way for birth or death? There was a birth, certainly. We had evidence, and no doubt. I had birth and death, but had thought they were different. This birth was hard and bitter agony for us, like death, our death. 
we return to our palaces, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease here in the old dispensation, with an alien people clutching their gods. I should be glad of another death.